I have an AB demonstration, so I'm going to try and look at the mic here. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Matt Beerbaum, and I'm going to talk to you today about some work that I've been doing with Jesse Silver over here, an advisory technology my advisory, um, Jim Setha. Over at Cornell, where we're looking at the behaviors at heavy metal offices. And so, my first question is where are my metal heads? Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what you can see is that it's a very different situation when you compare it to every day, say walking down the street in pedestrian lanes or at AP or cars meetings. It's very loud, it's energetic, there's bright flashing lights, and in fact the injury rate is about 50 times that as say you're Velocities and distances are away are in the same direction. You can see that the data in the, in the black dots is well fit by the solid curve, which is exponential, which guides around a shoulder width. So, what we see here is a very uncorrelated motion, and it's very much like an ideal cast. So, how do these non equilibrium, presumably intelligent agents display <laughs> ideal gas behavior? And so, to really get a hold of this, what we did is we created a block and block. So, we call this mashing. They're mobile active simulated humanoids. And um, basically, they're, they're simulating people as elastic bits on a 2D board. And so there's four uh, forces that we put in. There's a collision of force, people will pass through each other. And so when their, their distances are separated by Rij, which is less than their diameter to R0, then they have this, this repulsion force. And then also, these people like to run around. So we saw in the video that they have non zero speed, so they have this self propulsion term. And this is characterized by the parameter beta. And then finally, we have the, we have this in the, the blocking tendency. So if you look at all your neighbors and look where they're going, you also want to move in that direction. It's characterized by alpha, which I'll mention again. And then finally, to take care of the bright flashing lights and the loud noises, and in those cases, they're integrated. Uh, we we have this noise curve. So this is uh, characterized by the blue width signal. And then, if you ever go to one of these concerts, you know that there are other people who don't like to participate, and there's the ones who do. So we have two populations, and we call them active and passive matches. So the active ones have a non-zero velocity, they also walk, and they have some noise, whereas the passive ones like to stand on the side like a wall fire. They don't like to move, they don't walk, and they don't have to use. Okay. So what we do is we start to look at parameter space, so in particular we're going to look at the noise and walking. So if we look at when the noise dominates the clocking, what we find is a very disordered state, just like we saw before. And if you look at the, the simulation data, which is in the squares, it also lines up with this 2D natural also. I'll come back to this in just a little bit. So instead, if we look at where the clocking dominates this noise, <coughs> what we see is this ordered vortex state of people. So there's a, like a human world one swirling to the right. We can characterize this by looking at the net angular momentum of the center of mass. So even when we start with no net angular momentum, what we see is it quickly 
orders itself and it's rotating in, in a sense. And then we ask the question, well, are these in the videos that we see for metal concerts? And the answer is over overwhelmingly yes. So there's small and medium and large ones. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's really big ones. So this one actually goes around the sound booth all the way around. So we can start to characterize these as well. So if we look at, say, the walking walking correlation function again, uh, we see that dies off much more slowly. So this means that on average, you're moving in the same direction as your neighbors when you're in these circles. And then you can ask the question, well, which direction are we going? Um, it turns out, in real life, in all the concerts that we've seen, 95% um, uh, flow, clockwise, all the rest go clockwise. In simulations, we have um, chirality, so, you know, it's 50 minutes, but that, that's great. And then someone always asks, um, is it Coriolis force? No. <laughs> So we're thinking it's the dominant hand is the people. That's our, our current analysis. So what we do is we go back and we fill in this angular momentum for all the parameter space. We do see this very centralized vortex state, which we now call circle fit. We also see this gas-like state in the form, which we call a function. We can understand where these occur just by looking at the time scale of the problem. So we consider the flocking time, the collision time, and the noise time. We can look at these lines. So the flocking time is like the time it takes to align. The collision time is the mean time between collisions. The noise time is the time it takes for this noise term to decorrelate your forward motion. So if you look at the competition between flocking and noise, we get the square root dependence, which maps out the boundary between circle pits and modules. If we look at flocking versus collisions, it's something that's independent of our noise level, right? So what's cool is there's a lower bound cutoff below the vortices where we see this gas-like state. So actually, we don't need to just add Gaussian noise to get a Gaussian actually get it just by having the collisions in the central limit. So this is cool. Also, these vortex states are sort of, I mean, they're not new. So people have seen these in other single population blocking models. They've seen two main routes to get them. So there's some kind of confinement involved. And we can sort of tune between the two. So there are two populations. But there's even more physics to look at. So we can make analogies to other non-equal systems. So, so we could look at, um, if you take some grains and you drive them electrostatically, what they see are these very complex packing patterns. So there's clusters and lattices, and they actually see vortices, which is C. If we go ahead and look at um, our simulations, we start to see these patterns too. This is cool. How are they related? If we start with a homogeneous distribution of active and passive managers, we see that they actually form these vortex vortices. And they collide and merge and form large ones. Is this related to the Oswald right thing that they see in these sorts of things? <coughs> and then, what we can do is look at stability and phase growth distance. So, on the left is a, a circle fit, which would be like taking all of Ithaca and cramming it into like three football fields. Which I think it's just kind of ridiculous. What's cool is that these are actually very stable. So, all sides of the pit seem to be stable. They do switch directions, they oscillate. But they always come back to this, this central thing. And it, it seems to be related to um, the fact that they do phase out. And so I hope I convince you that we do have this cool model for metal concerts, and that there is actually a lot of rich physics in it. So it's at this point that I should mention there are some serious implications because we think that we're starting to describe something basic about how people uh, behave in these extreme situations. Then maybe we can use this as a lens to look at, say, other, other similar streams. Rides and protests and escape panic. So, we're hoping to do that in the future. And so, with that, <laughs> I'd like to thank our inspirations for the work. And then I would like to not thank the people who didn't want us. Um, we really received no funding, and I always have to say this there's no funding for, from governments for this work. And, uh, so, that means we bought our own concert tickets and deafened ourselves. So, if you ask questions, keep in mind, talk about them.
there any way, what would be the consequence of it? Is there a way to modify the model surgery so that all it takes is a single deviation so I can create something that's a lot of fewer parameters and fewer equations and stuff like this? Um, do you mean, so having just one population that changes? Like yeah, so basically, so that, I mean, there's the first guy puts his lighter up. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it's sort of the thing. so I would say, from personal experience, I would guess it's an deviation phenomenon instead of this active fluctuation. Yeah, I can, I can certainly see that. And that would be a, uh, certainly a direction going forward. And um, it would be interesting to see if switching populations changes the dynamics of it. I'm not going to say that. Yes? So you're going for an eight no better price, right? <laughs>